The member for Fisher has the call. Uh, Madam Speaker, my question is addressed to the Minister for Veterans Affairs. Uh, on the Sunshine Coast, we have many service veterans, and I'm advised in early March at Rooty Hill, the Prime Minister promised to meet with the leadership of the Alliance of Defence Service Organisations to outline the government's possible solutions to the issue of unfair indexation of military superannuation pensions. But I understand the ADSO leadership has been repeatedly told the Department of Finance uh, is supposed to give input. When is the input expected and when will this meeting with the ADSO leadership take place? The Minister for Veterans Affairs has the call. With less than two weeks of Parliament to run, that's a very good question from Mr Sliver. It should receive a simple, straightforward, clear, unambiguous answer. Let's see what this nation was delivered up by the responsible minister. Uh, can I just uh, remind the House what this question is about? It's about uh, uh, whether or not uh, it's about whether or not the Defence Force Retirement Benefits Scheme, which closed in September 1972, uh, and the Defence Force Retirement and Death Benefits Scheme, which closed in September, 90, uh, September 1991, are uh, appropriately indexed. They are indexed to the CPI. Uh, this matter was reviewed by Matthews in 2008, uh, who came to the view that it was an appropriate method of indexation. Nevertheless, there is an issue which has been created in the community uh, by some uh, people within the ex-service organisations trying to conflate the issue of fair indexation, as you describe it, with indexation of age pensions and other income support payments. It is very, very clear, and we need to comprehend this, that military superannuation retirement pay provides a lifetime guaranteed level of income and indexation, regardless of the person's other income or assets, and is not affected by investment returns. Uh, the bulk of the people who have uh, retired after 20 years of service, which are entitled to do under these schemes, are able to take a lump sum payment in excess of 99 per cent did. So after the, include the benefits of this scheme are, and it's a good scheme, uh, benefits after 20 years of service, commuting up to five times the annual superannuation retirement pay for a lump sum in exchange for a reduction in the annual payment, a higher percentage of final salary compared to other Commonwealth schemes and a government employer contribution of around 30 per cent compared with the, current, with the current national standard, which is 9 per cent increasing to 12 per cent. So this is not and cannot be compared to an income support payment. It is not. And unfortunately, the discussion which is being going on in the community, promoted, I might say, by the opposition, is that somehow or another, if you don't index... If you don't index, if you don't index the DFRB and DFRDB payments to the same as uh, age pension, then somehow or another it's being unfair. I am very conscious of the issues that have been raised Order. in the electorate. We are continuing to work on the issue. You are right. The Department of Finance is looking into the issues, and we expect we'll have more to say in, coming in, the, in, the, in the very near future. Madam Speaker, my supplementary question is to the Minister for Veterans Affairs. Is the government likely to be in a position before the election to be able to announce a fairer indexation system for military superannuation pensions? The Minister for Veterans Affairs has the call. Again, can I thank the, the member for Fisher for his question. Uh, as I said during the, my last uh, contribution to the initial question, we are currently examining the issue. The Department of Finance has provided us with advice and we'll have more to say in the near future. Unbelievable. I'll address about four or five points from that response from Minister Snowden. But up front, I just want to make the point. He made out as though this is only an issue for DFRB and DFRDB uh, pensioners. That's not the case. And he knows it's not the case. He knows that we're concerned about the MSBS scheme as well. And that is the scheme that our current men and women are serving under. Because it too is severely impacted by an unjust, unfair indexation process that he, as the responsible minister, is fully aware of. The next point I want to address is, Minister, show me where we have said that we want a pension like the age pensioners. We have consistently addressed this as an indexation issue, and that's what it is. It just happens to be that when you index a, any pension, any welfare payment, 
you index it to maintain purchasing power. And that's what we, ADSO, Defence Force Welfare Association, have consistently written to you about for the last three years. You cannot misunderstand what we've conveyed to you. We are not saying we want the age pension for heaven's sake. We understand that's a welfare payment. But Mr Whitlam, Mr Barnard and Frank Crean understood this back in the early 70s when they brought in an indexation process that would maintain purchasing power for the welfare payments, in other words the pensioners, and for the Commonwealth superannuants, the public servants and the military. So don't stay out there in front of Parliament and pretend that we are going around demanding we want the age pension. That is not the case whatsoever. We're saying we want justice, we want equity, and we want what the Parliament said they were going to give us, and that is a, a fully indexed, fully indexed pension to maintain purchasing power. And then it cleverly got changed, and you know how it got manipulated, so it doesn't do what it's intended to do. If what you're claiming is true, then why on earth has your government brought in the PBLCI in 2009 and then increased the average total weekly earning payment from 25 to 27.7%? You understand that that was done to maintain purchasing power. So if you've got to do that to maintain purchasing power with the age pension, and then suddenly it's okay to use just CPI for the military pensions and the Commonwealth public servants, then what gives here, Minister? How can you stand up in front of Parliament and mislead so badly? The next issue, of course, is where was the response to the question? When is the Prime Minister going to meet with the executive of Defence Welfare Association and ADSO? A simple, straightforward question. She promised she was going to do it in the first week in March. Here we are getting to late June, less than two weeks of Parliament to sit for this running government, and still no meeting. Obviously now it's too late, uh, and yet the game's being played. And they say that the, the, the scheme is, is okay, that what we're on is okay, and yet then in this response, Mr Stone says, oh, but we're going, going to get information from uh, finance. In fact, he even says, I've got the information from finance, we're going to uh, disclose more in the near future. In the near future, two weeks of Parliament left. Can't wait to hear this. What is going on? Minister Kelly says, oh, I'm waiting for the, for the data from finance before I can do anything. Mr. Stone stands up in Parliament there and just said, uh, we've got the data and we're going to make an announcement shortly. Someone's lying here. I don't know what's going on. But what we deserve and what the public deserve is the truth from our elected representatives. And right now, it's hard to find. As a final thought, how disingenuous to talk about the notional employer contribution rate, rate NECR. He left the members of the House thinking that what the military are on is a very generous scheme. He was referring to, of course, the NECR for the DFRDB scheme that closed in 92, or 91 actually, and is in its final stage of wind-up with now less than 3,000 members still serving. And so the age of service is long and the rank is high, and so the notional employer contribution rate is distorted. And so he uses that distortion to create this picture of a very generous, not that he used the word generous, but a very generous, he said a very good scheme. And yet totally ignored his own exceptionally generous scheme that's had three massive pay rises inside the year and that uh, it just goes on and on being indexed to the current salary of the current bank venture. He's not concerned about maintaining his purchasing power when he goes into retirement. He knows full well that he's home and hose for the rest of his life, not having to worry about how he's going to feed he and his spouse in, in retirement. How disgusting is that, Australia, that we treat our military with such disdain, and yet the politicians have got the audacity to stand up in Parliament, like Minister Stone did yesterday, and talk nonsense. I'm sorry, but I've got to be honest here. That was a pathetic performance. To totally disregard the question asked, and then to stand up and first of all say it's a good scheme and it doesn't need anything done to it, then to say, oh, we've got some data, we're going to make an announcement shortly. Then to assert that we're arguing for a, to be treated as age pensioners when that is not the case at all and he knows it. The Minister knows that, 
So where does the line get crossed from just being incompetent in making a statement in, in the House to deliberately misleading the Parliament and thereby the, the Australian people? I think the performance of Minister Snowden in the House yesterday raises serious concerns that should worry all Australians. Thank you.